What's going on everybody? We are finally back with a Rogue Legacy 2 content. The Drifting Worlds update just dropped, which means the Sun Tower is now accessible. The video playing in the background is going to be just me going to the Sun Tower. And as per usual when the new biomes drop, we're going to be going over everything new with a new biome. This biome is slightly different and you guys are going to see how. So first up, I want to thank everybody. We are almost at 350 subscribers as of the time I'm recording this. So I want to thank you all for the support. I'd love to make content for you guys. I know it's been a little bit of a break, but with the new Rogue Legacy 2 content and New Game Plus being added, we're definitely going to be making a lot of Rogue Legacy 2 videos. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's get on with the video. So the very first thing you are going to notice about the Sun Tower as you watch this video is that the layout is a lot different. Just how Axis Mundi is a horizontal with some platforming, this biome is vertical, you know, Sun Tower, makes sense, and has an absolute ton of platforming. And the platforming here is way more difficult than Axis Mundi. However, it's not too difficult. Like, I think it's the perfect level of difficult, honestly. And I'm a fan of it. You definitely need to know how to spin kick. I'm using a controller, and I didn't really have too much, too many issues with it. It wasn't awful, but yeah, this is definitely a platforming biome. So if you've had trouble with platforming in the past, then you may have some trouble with this biome. Just as a heads up, that's one thing to consider. Now, something else you're gonna notice is missing from this guide. There's not gonna be an heirloom in this guide because there is no heirloom. There's no heirloom in this biome. Um, from what a dev said in Discord, it almost seems like all the heirlooms are currently in the game and there won't be any more. Maybe that'll be changed, but as of now, no heirloom in the Sun Tower, so we don't need to worry about doing that. So our main focus for this video is going to be where to get the 15% damage boost for the new estuary, as well as fighting the new estuary itself. So first, let's go find the Insight. So as you are exploring the Sun Tower, you're going to find a room that looks like this. You have to go through a door and it'll have a spike trap. And if you just go to the left of the spike trap through the wall, you'll be able to go to this journal. Now. The journal is going to show you one entry and you just have to keep reading the journal for more entries to show up. Here I'm just going to be scrolling through all the entries. You guys can pause the video if you guys want to read through these or you can just go here yourself and just read through it. But once you read the final one, entry 7, those question marks in entry 8 I believe are a bug. But once you read the entry 7 one you will get the insight to go find the damage boost just like you would with all the other ones. There at the bottom you can say it says my old room at the base of the sun tower should do the trick. The entrance has been boarded up, but there's a trick wall beside the windowed spike pit. The blue text is obviously your hint, and that is exactly what we're going to be doing. Now this one was a bit tricky for me to figure out, but I was able to figure it out. And I'm going to show you guys exactly where it is. Here, let me show you guys the room. So yeah, that wall right there, you can just dash through. And you'll see a question mark room like this, and that'll be how you know you're in the right place. But moving on, let's go actually get the damage boost. All right, so we are back at the base of the Sun Tower, just like the journal entry told us. You're going to be going up here just like you normally would. But instead of dashing on this lantern, you're going to want to go over here. And there's going to be not this this hole here, but you're going to want to use a spell on that. And then the hole will appear, just like all the other breakable walls. You can jump up here, and there will be another thing you can break. Go in, and here we go. You read a memory, I read's memory. You read a note. I read note, you don't get anything. A lot of people will probably find this and they don't know what to do, but if you look up, you can see that there's something else up there. What you need to do is jump up here, use another spell or talent, whatever, and you will get another hole. This is how you actually get the 15% damage boost. Reading the stuff down there isn't gonna get you anything. You need to come up here and then you'll actually get the insight resolved after you read this memory. Ray talks about his theory being true and all this, and he's gonna condemn the other estuaries as traitors. And after you read all this, you get your damage boost, and you will be able to fight Irad with doing some more damage. It'll be a lot easier with this insight. Now, I didn't actually do it with this insight, but it definitely is a lot easier with it. All right, now that we have the insight and we have climbed all the way up the tower, we are ready to fight Irad. Now, just a disclaimer, I did fight this boss after the first hotfix of the update. But not after the second hotfix, which hasn't come out yet by the time I'm recording this. The reason that's important is because the bosses, as of the time I'm recording this, have less health than they are supposed to. So this fight is definitely going to be tougher than this video makes it out to look. 
but just know that all the techniques and fighting is going to hold true, it's just going to be a longer fight. Here you can see Estuary Irad is this creepy eyeball boss. I think it's a really cool design, honestly. And there's a variety of attacks. You can see there's those dark shadow things that you can just punch away. Typical blue fireball projectiles and the purple void, which you can dash through, assuming that you have the void dash, which actually you're definitely going to have void dash because they do lock Sun Tower behind void dash because there is a void dash you can use at the beginning. So you will have that. Just know that you have to be using that. If you're also wondering why I'm doing so much damage, other than the fact that Ira doesn't have much health, the Retaliation Rune is still amazing. But once you get down to half health, this third eyeball will show up and it will start shooting resonant projectiles. You tell it's resonant because it's glowing, you can use Echo Kick, and it also has like that kind of red radius that you may have just seen, kind of like a nightmare. It's a very quick attack, so you may want to just try and avoid my main method of this was trying to avoid the bottom one as much as possible because the side ones were easy to hit and it's just constantly really just wailing on him. I was just getting up and close since I was using the boxer and I actually killed it with a retaliation hit just because I hit a resonant projectile and after that you are done with Estuary Irad. Now Estuary Irad is the last Estuary of the game so assuming that you didn't like skip a knock at the in the study um, you will have all of your portraits filled all well, five of the six filled which is the final one of this current update and you'll get a world complete screen now that screen means you have beat all the bosses that are currently available in the game and the next step up is new game plus which is exactly what the next video is going to be on hope to see you guys next time in that video and i'll catch you guys later see you